ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bolanle. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? So she was trying to ginger you guys, but the volume was low. I came here with some spunk and excitement for this next masterclass that we're going to be having. My name is Bolanle Olukani. I'm so excited to be here. And even more so, so excited to introduce our next expert. All of us do hair. Every single person here, we love hair. We want to look good. Today I tried coming with my Beyonce. Is it working? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, good, good, good. And this next person has worked with numerous celebrities. So she's coming from the abroad, but even more so, she is an absolute expert. She's worked with people like Yara Shahidi. She's worked with Uzo Aduba. She's worked with John Legend, Common. And her work has been featured in Vogue, Allure, Bazaar. You guys getting it? So that means that she's an absolute expert. So I want us to give her a Lagos welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Navasha Johnson to the stage. Ready? Lagos welcome. Navasha is here. Navasha, how are you doing? I'm good. Doesn't she look fabulous? Thank I mean, look you. at her slay shoes. <laughs> I've already told her that she's going to give me those shoes before she leaves, but we're still kind of trying to negotiate that. Now, you guys know that we're going to be talking about expressing yourself through hair. And every single one of us as black women, we absolutely love hair. And Naivasha has worked with so many different stylists. So I want us, first of all, before we get to the demonstration part where she's going to be showing us how to do an amazing hairstyle, we're going to be talking to her about her journey and how she got to become a celebrity hairstylist. So Naivasha, you are an amazing woman. Thank You're you. You're a mom of five children, married. I know, right? You're like, where did the, ki where did the kids come from? Um, and you were a real estate agent before you became a celebrity hairstylist. So yeah. tell us about that journey. Well, hi, you guys. First of all, I want to say thank you, GT Bank, for having me here. Thank you, Lagos, for welcoming me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm honored, and I'm glad to be here. Um, as far as transitioning from real estate to hair, hair has always been a part of me. Art has always been a part of me. Um, however, when I finished college, I started doing real estate. Real estate has been in my family for a very long time. My grandmother, my mother, my husband, everybody's real estate. But when the market crashed in 2007, we have a big family, it's a family of seven, me, my husband, and our five kids. There was our income. Hmm. And I had to go back to what I love, and that's hair. And so we, we picked up and we moved from Memphis, which is where I'm from, and we moved to Atlanta. And I started my hair journey in Atlanta, Georgia. So tell us a little bit about starting that hair journey, because I know you were working at a salon. Yeah. Um, and then you transitioned from the salon to actually begin working with editorials and celebrities. Absolutely. Now, in your time, what is it do you think about you that made you stand out to be able to begin to work with celebrities? I was literally doing free photo shoots about four times a week, nonstop, because I wanted to be in those magazines. I wanted to be a part of, of that circle of the industry. And the only way that I could do that, especially in the South, is shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, build relationships with photographers, build relationships with other makeup artists and, hair, and hairdressers and stylists. And, all, and so that's all I did non-stop along with working in the salon now i know that your first celebrity was wanda sykes yes how did that happen actually one of my really good friends and that goes back to us supporting each other one of my really good friends and hairdresser tippy shorter is the one who referred her to me mm -hmm. because she was tippy's client and she was way on the other end of the country she said Natasha, what are you doing how's your natural hair game i was like it's good i got it and I went right over and did it, and it's been bliss ever since. 
That's amazing. Now, I just want to make sure we can hear her very well, right? Y'all can hear me? You guys can hear well? Hello. Okay, good, good. Just want to make sure we're all hearing. Now, as a black woman, I want us to talk about hair. You know, we're talking about expressing yourself through hair. What's your earliest memory of your hair experience and also noticing things around, of people around you that you feel like as black women we make mistakes when it comes to our hair? My earliest experience with hair was torture. <laughs> it was absolute torture. My mom would shampoo and condition my hair and plait it up wet and leave it like that for a week to air dry. And then she'd come back to all eight of the plaits that she put on my head and try to detangle it and then try to press it. And I'm super tender headed. So for her to even touch my scalp just made it hurt even more. So yeah, that's my earliest experience. What do you, what do you think there's some mistakes that we make when it comes to managing our hair? It so is. a large, I know a lot, a lot of us are relaxed. Who here is relaxed? Who here is natural? Team Natural, I'm excited, Abby. We know, we know. Now, specifically, let's start with relaxed, because I'm, I'm transition. Um, but let's start with relaxed hair. What are some mistakes that women who get relaxers do when they're taking care of their hair? But can we talk about that for just a moment, though? I don't want us to feel like our hair being relaxed is a bad thing, because it's not. There's beauty in relaxed hair, there's beauty in natural hair, there's damage to relaxed hair, there's damage to natural hair. And we just have to take care of underneath. For one, with, with relaxed hair, the thing that we have to remember to do is get our retouches on time. The moment that you stop getting your retouch on time, that hair that's relaxed is gonna pop off just like this, it's gonna break. We have to keep it moisturized, we have to keep it shampooed, and we have to be careful to stray away from heat. Okay. So a lot of us here, we usually get our hair done at a salon. We have some people who do get their hair done at home. Who's a DIY person? You do your hair by yourself, you use YouTube, I'm her. right? Okay. <laughs> but majority of us have someone else taking care of our hair. Now, as black women, what do you think there's some things that we can know personally to make sure that the people who are taking care of our hair take care of it really well? Properly detangling. Okay. Properly detangling. Um, even with my daughters, I noticed that when I send them to the braid shop to get their hair done, they're not taking their time in the salon to detangle their hair. They're just taking that Demon brush or taking that rat tail comb and just snatching it from the roots. And edges are falling out roots are falling out everything is falling out just like this we have to detangle from the bottom so we start from the bottom and detangle our hair all the way up and that's how we that's how we hold on to it is there a specific type of comb you suggest for detangling i don't suggest a comb at all for detangling really Not at all so what do you use a paddle brush a paddle brush yes everyone familiar with what a paddle brush is Okay, I think you have one that we can... I do. Okay, so she's going to show us what a paddle brush is later. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of hair, and specifically for black women. You know, right now, I have a bleach blonde wig. <laughs> a lot of us in here have bleach blonde. We're doing purple. We're doing pink. Uh -huh. What are the colors that we're doing? We're doing green, teal. red, teal. I mean, it's changing. Gone are the days where someone will say, as a black woman, you cannot do X, Y, and Z. How do you think we can begin to embrace possibly more acceptance to our own, wearing more of our own hair instead of weaves and wigs? Health, uh, hair care. Hair care is key. Because if our hair is healthy, we're going to appreciate it and we're going to be proud about it. And there will be a certain level of uh, pride when we walk out the door because we want to show it off. We, we want everyone to see how beautiful it is, how shiny it is, how popping our curls are. And we can't do that if we don't take care of it. Yeah. Now, in terms of Hollywood and your experience with working with Yara, working with Uzo, Uzo is our Nigerian sister, mm -hmm. and um, making sure that they're expressing themselves through hair, what, what's your experience been like with that? Say that one more time. In terms of you know, working with Uzo and Yara and their Hollywood celebrities, we all know their preconceived notions of what a celebrity's hair should look like. Right. But as black women, you're changing that with them. Yes, talk absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about how you guys talk about get to the hairstyles that you want to do for red carpet looks and, and editorial. And actually, it's the whole production. 
<laughs> we take how we're feeling right now, our mood. We take the colors that we're wearing, um, the level of the event, if how high profile it is or how casual it is, um, along with the styling, like what's being worn. And we just start intertwining the whole beauty experience with that from makeup to whether we want to do a cat eye or whether we want to do a smoky eye. And then if that cat eye and smoky eye is going to be um, perfect or in balance with big, huge, 4C hair, you know, like that, or if we, or if we want to bring it a little bit more relaxed with a little bit of 3C mm -hmm. hair, we can all wear every texture we want. Now, do you feel like there has been some sort of backlash sometimes when more African-looking styles are seen on the red carpet, and how do you feel Hollywood is beginning to embrace that? Because we all know, for example, um, we have you know the Kardashians, and we have a lot more Caucasian women who are beginning to do looks like, they call it boxer braids, but we know it as cornrow, or in Nigeria, we call it biba, all back. Mm -hmm. But we're finding that a lot more non-black women are doing that. Why do you think there's beginning to become such a strong acceptance of African hairstyles? What I would like to see first is acknowledgement that it wasn't invented as boxer braids. You know, these are cornrows, and cornrows have been around since the beginning of time, and that hairstyle came from us. And so, once it's celebrated the right way, we can all have all have a better appreciation for it. And we have to we have to put that out there, and we have to speak on it and, and talk about it. And when when editors come to me and ask me about the um, bantu knots that are on Yara's hair instead of calling them um, a whole head full of top knots. No, those are not a head full of top knots. Those are bantu knots. <laughs> those are bantu knots on a, on a black girl. You know, we have to put it out there. We have to put it out there accurately. And we have to um, pull up the history behind it so people can know that we're educated about our own hair. We're educated about who we are. We know who we are. We know when we look at our, at our beautiful locks that we can embellish them and we can put them in all types of shapes and, and do many beautiful, beautiful things to them. And it didn't just come up in 2012 or this wasn't just um, picked out by the Kardashians or any other celebrity who didn't originate that. Now, I'm really glad you said that and I feel like it's definitely a different time where we're beginning to experiment with our hair, so we're doing a lot of more different hair colors, but we're also experimenting and we're doing more African-looking hairstyles, so like dreads. Yes. And we just had behind me in the display where we saw <laughs> some of the amazing work that you've done. Thank you. And I want to talk, can we give her a round of applause for this? This is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I want to talk about inspiration and hairstyling and coming up with pieces that you're really proud of. Um, where do you draw most of your inspiration from when you're coming up with hairstyles? I'm really into art. I'm really into art galleries. I'm really into museums. So I go to museums, I go to galleries, I research, I go through history books, and I study a lot. Um, and even um, the Asian culture, their culture is very innovative. So I take those straight shapes and that straight texture and all those different hairstyles and I translate it to our texture so that it can be dimension. It can be layers on top of layers of beauty and layers on top of layers of texture. And so I just put that out there. That's where I got those shapes from. And then, you know, hand sewing those embellishments in there. You know. That's brilliant. Thank so you. I think we should get to the practical part, right? We want to see her do some hair. Yeah. You know, ideally, what would have happened was an audience member would have gotten their hairstyle for free, but I didn't plan this. <laughs> so, what is going to happen is we have a beautiful model who's going to be coming out, and Naivasha is going to be doing her hair, and then we're going to be taking some question and answer from you guys, and just to encourage you to ask questions, we have five goodie bags filled with makeup. Ooh. Yep. Yep, so that means that if you ask a question, you get a goodie bag. So I'd like to call on Danielle, our beautiful model, to come out, and we will begin the demonstration. A round of applause please for Danielle as she comes out. Hi, Danielle. 
There you go, darling. And I trust that we have another microphone and someone who will be getting some questions. So do we have any questions? Okay. Because makeup is part of the award, right? Um, all right. So let's start over there on the left, please. I'm particularly interested in um, express, expressing your hair and being inspired when she talked about visiting arts and all that. I have a short hair. Okay. I'm a music artist. Please, Ma, I want you to tell me what works for a short hair in expression of talents like music, especially Afro music. How do you feel? Hmm. <laughs> your, your expression is all about how you feel. Okay. Yeah. So how do you feel? What type of music? Afro music. Afro music. Is, a, is it a bunch of upbeat and a bunch of movement? Let's go with a pretty balanced mid-tempo. Okay. Um, so are you fun and edgy or are you more sophisticated and chic? Because it's all about how, how you feel. It's hard to fit me in a box. It's hard to fit in words, so you sound a little edgy then. <laughs> okay. Because that means that there's no definition behind it. You could just do your thing. And actually, what I would do for your hair is I would just leave it really messy and coily and create shapes out of it. Whoa. And hit it with a little bit of shine and go. Sounds pretty amazing. That's what I would do. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's get another question. Okay, so we're gonna go to the other side of the room. And there's a young lady who has really cute cornrows. Obiba, why am I saying cornrows like Wabro? Well, I love cornrows, right there. by the way. Yeah. She has plots, thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, okay, I have a question. I actually have this um, dandruff condition, yeah. And then I've tried a couple of things and it doesn't want to go away. So I'm just asking if there's like, really anything permanent that can you do for my hair to not have dandruff and stuff, yeah. I didn't so hear that. What can you do to your hair to not have dandruff? Yes. She said she has dandruff and she wants to know what she can do to prevent herself from having dandruff anymore. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I can't stress it enough with, with natural hair or with hair, period. The key to moisture, I mean the key to healthy hair is moisture. Not necessarily oil, but moisture. So when you shampoo your hair, the next thing you should put on there is a deep conditioner, like a mask or a deep conditioner. And you're, you can even leave it on all day. You don't have to take it off. You can leave it on. And when you rinse it, rinse it with cold water. And does she, can she use any type of conditioner? Any type of conditioner. I, Pantene is a good one for, for our natural hair. Pantene and Paul Mitchell. Okay, Pantene or? Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell. Okay, did you get that? All right, thank you. Thank you, Navasha. All right, let's go to the back. And do we have any guys who want to have a question? Any guys? Any guys? You can get a makeup bag for your baby. Any guys? Okay, no. All right, so let's go to the back. The lady with the bald head, right there. Ooh. <laughs> Yay, finally. Hi, Mrs. Jensen. Hi. My name is Electra. And um, my question is actually about your training. You didn't, um, you didn't say anything about that. And I am particularly curious as to, you know, what sort of training you must have gotten. And, you know, if you have any recommendations for anyone who is interested in learning, you know, Absolutely. what you do. Absolutely. I trained at Paul Mitchell School Atlanta. I went for a year and a half. Um, there I learned um, cutting, coloring, um, finishing skills, and how to be a good business person in this field. So I, my recommendation to any hairdresser is to go to beauty school. Now in this market, I'm going to be honest, beauty schools are few and far in between, right? Okay, so what would you say about being self-taught? and possibly using online, you know, methods to learn. I'm not so opposed. YouTube or anything like that. And is there anyone you would recommend online possibly? 
those same skills you could get on YouTube or um, who do I want to recommend? Paul Mitchell does have some online classes. I, I, would, I would do that. Okay. Yeah. So the recommendation is Paul Mitchell. Check him out online and see. And then YouTube is your friend always. Okay, so how many goodie bags have we given out? Three? Okay, so we only have two more goodie bags. So after that, the questions are just for questions. So let us go all the way to the back. And we have someone wearing red. Yeah, right there. Yeah, with the head thing inside. No, not you. <laughs> no. Hi. Hello, Mrs. My name is Ade Bingpe. So I want to know, what do you do to um, breaking heads? I'm uh, sorry, say that one more time. What do you do when, you're, when your hair is breaking? So she's saying, what would you do when your hair is breaking? So you're having damage, it's not growing, that kind of thing. Wherever the breakage is happening, cut it off. Cut it off and start doing deep conditioning sessions over and nonstop. You can do one once a month or even every two weeks and re, uh, re remove uh, heat out of your hair regimen. Say that again? Remove heat okay. out of your hair regimen. So in terms of cutting it off, like you mean just like snipping everything that is Whatever shedding. is damaged, cut it off. And deep conditioning, what, would you, what products would you recommend using? Any natural products? They could be natural or you could try something um, Something at high in protein. Okay. High in protein. Would you recommend using egg? <laughs> no? So they lie to us <laughs> on YouTube, guys. <laughs> so what, would you, what would you recommend using? I would try um, IC. Okay. It's a good one. Pantene has a great um, hair mask. So Shea Moisture has a great hair mask. And all those are, pretty, are fairly easy to obtain. Yeah. Cool. Did you get that? You can get them from like, yeah. see, like, okay, a, like so, a local pharmacy. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, we have a guy in the back <laughs> on the right. Oh, he even wrote his question down. I like diligence. Yeah, so um, my name is Dapo. Can you speak just a little louder? Okay. Um, is there anything you can do to your hair to make it remain black after relaxing? Sorry, say that again. Like, Anything you can do to your hair to make it remain black after relaxing. So what can you do to your hair to make it remain retain its color, yeah. like being jet black after yeah. relaxing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sometimes, you know, when you relax your hair, it begins to be browner than black. What can you do to make sure that it stays black? Go in and refresh your color. So you would have to dye it black? Yeah. And you don't have to use a permanent color to refresh. You can use a semi-permanent color or a temporary color. Just to, just to drop that, that pigment back in. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so let us go over here. She's standing up already on the left. No, no not you. <laughs> over there. Yeah, she knows who she is. Yes, good afternoon. Hi. Um, so I want to ask, um, Um, how do you express yourself at the same time, creating balance, expressing yourself through your hair, your natural hair? At the same time, we all know our hair wants to breathe at times. So it requires us to actually do some covering, like wigging out, um, putting on wig and all of that. So how do we create balance? She wants to know, how do you create balance with your hair, your natural hair, and also doing protective styles. So kind of what we were talking about earlier. Okay. My recommendation, because I'm a wiggy too, I love wigs, I love extensions, I love all those things. I recommend keeping your hair freshly braided and using black Jamaican castor oil um, on your scalp so that your hair can stay healthy in your protective styles. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's get all the way in the back in the denim jacket. Don't worry, I'll come to you afterwards. Yep, in the denim jacket. Okay, um, it's a privilege to meet you, Ma, but I would like to say, um, I feel like our weather affects our hair 
over here. So I, I don't know what you have to say about that because a lot of us on natural hair, we feel like no matter what we try to do, sometimes the weather always has its way of making our hair so dry and so... Yeah. So I, I don't know what you have to say about that. Thank you. My recommendation is moisturize. Oh, okay. Moisturize. And it'll keep it from turning as fast. Um, because the, the moisture in it is going to maintain your curls. It's going to maintain um, the softness. It's going to maintain all those things that, that it needs to stay healthy okay. so, and manageable. All right. So Thank moisture you. seems to be like the biggest thing. It is the now, key. Now, when you're saying moisture, use a spray bottle. You, that's right. You can, okay. put, you can put conditioner and water in a spray bottle and, and use that. You can also use that as a cocktail to detangle. Cool. All right, let's get a question over here. Short hair, right? That, yep. Okay, um, Mrs. Johnson, thank you. Um, my question is, how do you um, enjoy variety while still maintaining your signature? I've been in this hairstyle for nine years now, and I don't intend to change it. So how do I enjoy variety still maintaining my brand? Thank you. You can use your same short hair and just change it up. You could put a part on the side or um, make it a little bit more texturized. Or you could take your blow dryer and just pull it out just a little bit with your brush so it can appear to have like sort of a straight look while being short and then just let it go and have movement. You can do so much with short hair, especially your length. Would you recommend adding color possibly? Color would be fun. Color would be fun. Thank you. All right, let's get right. Oh my gosh, so many. Okay, in the fronts, in the whites with the braids. Thank you. My name is Lo Fun. Um, um, I'm a natural. I've been a natural for three years now. Um, what, part of what made me to transition into my um, natural is my scalp is very tender, and anytime I retouch my my scalp burns, so I don't know, is there any recommendation for like light scalp or something? Okay, say that again, your scalp is very? Very light, I don't know, anytime I tender, try okay. to retouch, I get burns all over my oh, scalp, in my scalp. Okay. so is there any recommendation for so so her, scalp? Her scalp is very tender, so she gets a lot of burns, Okay. and um, yeah, so she wants to know what she can do when she gets burns, when she's relaxing her hair. Okay, the relaxer should not get anywhere near your scalp. And that's a, that's a huge mistake that, that we make with relaxers, is we, once we section it, we put it right on the scalp and bring it down. That is instantly melting your scalp and it's damaging your scalp. So what you wanna do is stay like an eighth to a sixteenth inch away from your scalp because the product, the chemical is going to work its way up anyway and give you that straight, um, give you that straight hair, give you that, sh that straight root that you're looking for without you having to allow the chemical to touch your scalp. So we're going to let Nevasha focus on wrapping up this hair and she's going to be talking us through because we're running out of time. And uh, she's doing a ponytail, and we want to see the finished product. So we're just going to let her focus on finishing up. And of course, she'll be telling us what she's doing as she's going. So we're going to hold off on the questions for now. OK, so what I'm doing now is sectioning and adding pomade to make it smooth. Because we all know when we have natural hair, it's really rough to get our hair to lay flat and to lay smooth and to give us that refined look that we want in a ponytail or in a look. I particularly like pomade because it doesn't have that wet jelly look. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going, I'm going in right now and creating uh, the smoothness that I need and then I'm gonna ponytail it and I'm gonna show you guys how to do an invisible ponytail. Sounds good. Are there any questions so far? Do you still want to do questions while we're... I'm fine Yeah. With it. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so can we get um, in the back with the glasses, please?
Good evening, everyone. My name is Rookie, and my hair, like I've been retouching my hair for some time. So when I came to Lagos, my auntie, they all keep natural hair. So when I started keeping my hair for like natural, they start to break. But I don't know what to do to it now because it's getting red every day. Like the color is so annoying. So I don't know what to do to it. Should I go back to retouching or I should, I should keep it like that as natural? And you said it's changing color, it's getting red? Yeah, like some are gold. Like I don't even understand oh, okay. the color. <laughs> so her hair is changing color on its own. It's becoming gold. And she wants, it's natural now. Yeah, okay. it, it's natural now. What are, what are you doing? Is something that, that you're doing that's causing it? Are you in the sun a lot? Because the sun can change the color of your hair. Like, particularly if your hair is chemically treated. Like I was retouching it before, but now I stopped. Step like 20. for like six months now. Oh, yeah, Steph. So, so she said she was retouching it before, but now she stopped. Okay. It's the chemical that's in your hair that's causing it to change colors in the sun. Okay, so what so until I? all that chemical is off of your hair, it's going to continue to get redder and redder, colder and colder. So what should I do? Either you can let your chemical grow out or you can cut it off. Wow. Well, cut it off. You'll be because fine. as long as the chemical is there, it's going to do that. She looks so upset. She's like, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll grow back. It's just hair. It's right. just hair. So did you pass the microphone to the person next to you? Yep. All right. So let's get the lady right next to her. Exactly. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Uju. I want to ask, how can someone maintain coily hair, like the one she's putting on, the maintenance? Okay. So how can you maintain this her hair? Yep. I think, okay, yeah. So they want to know how can they maintain that as a natural hair or no, wig? No, quite wig. Like okay, the, the one wig. she's Yeah, what do you on. do with, how do you maintain this? I plait it at night. Sorry? You plait it overnight? At night. Okay. So she weaves this at night and then loosens it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go right over there on the right. Right. Yep. Right there. stylist, a stylist, and I wanted to ask, how do you build your brand, like literally from nothing to something? She's asking, how do you build your brand from nothing to something? How do I do what? Build your brand from nothing to something. Networking. Yeah. She said networking. Networking is key. Networking, treating your business like a business and not like a hobby. And staying consistent and persistent. Did you get that? Awesome. Okay, so right over here on this side, in the green, I have a question. For a lot of us who do wear wigs and our edges tend to, you know, get ruined mm -hmm. from that, wigs are supposed oh, to be a protective style. Right. What can we do to prevent that? For that, I would say... Um, Make sure when you're wearing your wig, underneath, you are taking care of your hair underneath. You're keeping your edges moisturized. You are not putting too much pressure from the combs on your wig. You're not putting too much of it on, on your, you're not stressing your edges out with the combs. Because we tend to do that. We'll use bobby pins or we'll use the combs or we'll use clips for the edges and it's just ripping it out. It's just ripping it out. So we gotta be careful with that. My recommendation is to use the elastic band that goes around there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, great. Well, I wanted to ask them, um, if I dye my virgin hair, will it still be natural? Will it, will I, can I still call it virgin hair if I dye it? No. Okay. Nope, it's no, longer, it's no longer virgin hair the moment you put um, chemicals on it. All right, let's go over there, Afro. Yeah in the back. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to ask, what do you do to your hair to prepare it for a silk press? Like, what products can you add to it if you want to, like, straighten it out or do something like that? Yeah. What products can you add to your hair before you do, like, a straightener, a silk press, or put heat on it? 
What can you do to prepare? A heat protectant when you get ready to blow dry it. Blow dry it using a paddle brush and then straighten it. That way you won't have to make too many passes through when you straighten your hair. Did you get that? Okay, cool. All right, let's go to the person right in front of her. Where's our mic assistant? Okay, there he is. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, when maintaining That's natural right. hair, how often would you say washing your hair would be ideal? Because I do it every two weeks. But once I feel like a week? It's once? Mm -hmm. But isn't that And it's much? because of... The, no, it's... And, the thing about it is that we're in a hot, humid area, and we, we tend to sweat. And so when your hair is clean, you can get right to it. Your curls can be preserved much longer. Right. So when your hair is clean and it's, um, um, there, there are no, there's no residue on there, and then you jump in there with a deep conditioner, it's going right to the hair. It's going right to the hair shaft. Okay. And then just quickly. So keeping your hair clean is very important. Okay. And then also with um, products, would you recommend natural-based products? As Not necessarily. Like, or chemical products? Not necessarily. They're both the same? Both as good? She said, are both of them the same? So you know how they say you should find, would you recommend parabene-free parabene products or does it have to be like black I mean, it's, soap? And it's a they're great to have and to use, but I don't necessarily know that they always do the job and what we need. Sometimes we need a little bit of that weight to give us what we need. Okay. Awesome. All right, let's go to right next to her. Hey, good day, everyone. Um, I have two questions. One for the model. Is that hair not too tight? <laughs> she doesn't look like she's complaining. Okay. <laughs> Then um, for Mrs. Johnson, yeah, could you please show us the brush you said, Barak brush or something? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. All right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, I definitely forgot. Right over here with the glasses, sunglasses. And girl, you got noticed. Keep the sunglasses on. So I wanted to ask, um, what edge control do you use to pack a hair? Hicks like edge control is my fave. What did you say? Hicks edge control. Okay. Let me show you. It's actually right here. <laughs> so this is the edge control that she's talking about, oh, if okay. you guys can see. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Okay. And to the lady right behind her in the blue. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my question is, um, I don't know if this question is, um, relevant, but it's not for me. It's for my baby. I have a 13 month um, baby, and <laughs> the Nigerian culture is that once a baby is a year old, you cut off her hair, and then the adult hair comes up. I don't really know how it happens, but my mom has been on my head. I should cut off my baby's hair, and she has hair like her hair is everywhere. So I really don't know what your advice is, considering the fact that you are from another side of the country. Is it really relevant to cut off a baby's hair so that another hair grows? Is it a myth or is it real? I really don't, I just want to understand. Okay. Nebasha, did you get that? I, I can't so hear So she wants to know, in Nigeria, once a child is one, we usually cut off all the baby's hair. And okay. she wants to find out what you think about that. Do you have to cut off your baby's hair? How does no. it affect the future growth of the child's hair? It doesn't necessarily affect the future growth. However, I don't, I personally don't believe that you have to cut a baby's hair, okay. hair at, a, at a year. I, I just like the idea of letting their hair be free. Okay. You know, like we like our hair to be free. I just believe in letting that baby's hair be free okay. and just go with it. So yeah, just let your child's hair grow. All right, right next to her with the red. Um. What other way can you like pack your hair other than like do one puff and two puff? What other ways can you pack your hair other than one or two puffs? Yeah, natural yeah? hair. Natural hair. So she's asking about natural hairstyles. What can you do besides one ponytail or two puffs? Ooh, the sky is the limit. You can do um, roller sets. You can do, of course, braids. You can do a pineapple. 
pineapple. A pineapple is when you let all your curls fall forward. Oh, okay. And you put, yeah, you can do. The sky is the limit with natural hair. All right, let's go to the other side of the room. Over here in the yellow at the front. Hello. Um, thank you. I've been natural for um, maybe four or five years. And it's currently dyed, like you can see. But I've tried to um, incorporate some, I've heard a lot about aloe vera and um, rice water and stuff like that. I don't know how true it is. Do they really work? I think it does. Okay. I think it does. It has um, healing and growth um, properties in it, those products. And just, just like castor oil. Castor oil is an amazing growth serum to use. Okay. I recommend it to everybody. I use it on myself. I use it on my children. I use it on my husband. I use it on my... It's okay. perfect. If you have, if you have uh, like alopecia areas or area where there's areas where there's been major breakage, if you use castor oil consistently in those areas, it will grow back. Ca Did you say cashew oil? Castor, castor oil. oil. So Jamaican black castor oil. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamaican okay. black castor oil. Um, the aloe vera, how often can you, because I've seen videos on YouTube, you could spray it every day. Um, I noticed that aloe vera makes the hair kind of dry and um, a bit hard. But that, go, that goes back to your moisture. So then you, okay. just, you just counteract that and go, and go in there with, um, with moisturizer. Okay, thank right, you. Thank you. Right, just slide it right over there in the front, in the black turtleneck. <laughs> How do you get rid of split ends without I'm losing the length of your hair? Okay. How do you get rid of split ends without losing the length of your hair? You have to cut split ends. You got to cut it off. You can't save it. I'm All right, sorry. Right, right behind her. Yeah, in the pink with the glasses. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm blessed. Okay, finally, I get the mic. <laughs> okay, my question goes to us. As a hairstylist, well, for me, I like the way you spoke passionately about expression. It means hair has a language. It does. How do you consciously and deliberately understand the language of hair to be able to express yourself through hair? You have Thank to you. first understand your own personal expression before you can express it through anything. So once you understand you, you can understand your hair, you can understand your personal expression. So it's finding your own voice first so that you can, so you can transfer it to your image. Okay, thank you. All right, right over there, uh, the guy with the green. Good afternoon. Hi. Yeah. I want to find out um, how you can prevent your head from going bald and um, if there are any products you can use to enable it to regrow. Say that again, how you can do what? From prevent your head from going bald. bald. Oh, yeah. how can you and prevent And if there yourself? are any products you can use to enable it to regrow, yeah. How can you prevent yourself from going bald, premature balding? What can you do? And once it starts, how can it's you... It's genetics. Yeah. Genetics. Basically, it's God's gift to you. So there are no I'm products sorry. you can use to... <laughs> what can you use to, to fix sorry. it? I'm sorry, it's there genetics. Anything? It's still God's gift to you, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> right, right next to him. She's. But you can totally do a come on if That's you're going mom bald. And just dad, I'm gang. sorry. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I want to ask. I have more than one question. So like, is there anything that we shouldn't be putting on our hair? Like, because basically every day they come up with something new, rice water. <laughs> so like, is there like something that we should never put on our hair? Hmm, that's a good one. That's a new one. I don't, I, that's a hard question. I don't I have an answer for that. I think it's just kind of hit and miss. Okay, and also, like how you said we should like wash our hair every week. Like, how often should we oil it, like when we're washing it? Every day. Every day. Yes. And is it best to oil it when it's wet or like when it's dry? When it's dry. When it's dry. Okay, Very thank good question. you. Thank you. All right, just over there in the back, right in the peach-ish, pink-ish top. Yes. Hi. Um, Hi. My question is, 
um, due to the busy schedule and all, most times I don't get to take care of my hair. And sometimes I just don't let my hair be like style go to work with it and all that, but I don't really get the time to. So can you please advise me now to just balance um, the time? Say that again, please. Okay, due to busy shadows, actually, yeah. um, work and all that, I don't get time to take care of my hair. Okay. And sometimes I would just love to rock my hair out like that to work or to any other place. Um, but I just don't have the time. So can you just advise me on how to like balance it between work and taking care of my hair? Okay. Well, how can she balance being busy, working, and taking care of her hair? Um, maybe you just have to plan your time better. <laughs> I'm just joking. But, um, yeah. Do you have an answer for her? Nope. All right. So let's go to another. I think it's just about time and sneaking it it's in. It's really is time management. Anything, is there any little secrets that you can possibly add? Like, is there anything I, I think it's, I think it's about time management and self-care. We have to make time for ourselves. That's just in the nutshell. We, you have to make time for you. And the moment that you stop making time for you is when, is when you fall apart. Okay. Whether it's your hair or whether, you know, it's your skin or any of those things, you have to make time for you. All right. Let us go to the middle right there in the black. Okay, go ahead. My name is Rosemary. I, for the guy there, he spoke about getting bowed. For a lady, what do you do? If you're a lady and you're because going you bald, must do something. what can you do? Because she said you must be able to do something. Yeah. For a lady and you're going bald, if you're losing your hair, what is it that you can do as a lady? As a lady, I would first check with my dermatologist because it could be your thyroid. It could be a medical condition that's causing you to lose your hair. So I would first check with my dermatologist, after which, or in between time, you could still do like weaves or wigs or, or even braids. But I, I would definitely check with my, uh, with my dermatologist to make sure that it's not an underlying factor. So you think it's most likely a health problem, so check with a doctor. All right, lady in the black and white, she's standing up. So we're gonna take one more question after this. And I am all Good afternoon, done. everyone. Uh, it's, my hair is not growing. And I think the reason is, I have very coily hair. And anytime I comb it, it always breaks. And um, I don't think it's because of um, the, the split end. I think it's... Um, Go ahead. Okay, so hair. what is causing the curly hair I need to, to know break? What, what, um, what she advised, okay. what I advise. What advice would you give to her because of her hair is curly and, and it's always breaking, but she, has, she doesn't think it's split ends? What, what's happening is that your hair is lacking moisture. So it's brittle. And so every time you comb it or brush it or, or touch it or pull it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall off. So you have to go back and add oil and add moisture. Okay, thank you. And the spelling of the edge control, ma. The spelling of the edge control. Oh, the spelling of the edge control? Yes. H-I-C-K. Hicks. Like, thank you. Yeah. All right, last question right here in the front, wearing Ankara. Hello. My name is Yeni, and uh, my, I have, like, very bad edges, and I have tried hair boosters. And nothing works. Also, my friend here, she's too shy to raise her hand. She has a message for you. She says she loves you. Bolali. Thank you. Yeah. So, what to do about these edges? Okay, her edges are really, really bad. Okay. And is it genetics or was there a specific hairstyle you did? Just me. My mom and my sister have your perfect hair. Your mom and sister, hair. so everybody in your family has bad edges. No, they have perfect hair. Just me. Oh, just you. Was there a specific hairstyle you did though that. No, I don't even braid it. Okay. What can you do to grow it back? Mm -hmm. She has really bad edges and she wants to know what she can do to fix that. What type of hairstyles are you wearing? Right now, because, I'm wearing a braid. Because we want to make sure that we're not putting too much tension mm -hmm. on your edges. 
because that can pull it out. And it's so ironic that you mention that because my oldest daughter has the same issue. Um, no matter what hairstyle I was putting on her as a, as a baby, her edges just would not stay. Um, and I had to realize that I can literally do nothing to her. I need to steer clear. Steer clear of your edges. Just make sure you do all of them, use a delicate brush, and just let them be. Just let them be. Don't put any pressure on them. Okay, no pressure, stare clear of the edges. Those are the two things. Because that's, that's a potential alopecia area. Did you get that? Okay, wonderful. We're going to let Nevasha finish up with this hair so we can wrap up. It's looking gorgeous. Now, what kind of ponytail would you call this? An invisible ponytail. An invisible ponytail. So if your hair is super short and you want a mega pony, you can have it. And that's the beauty of our hair. We can do anything we want to do with it. We can have any style we want. It can be as long as we want it to be. It can be as thick as we want it to be. And it can look as realistic as we want it to. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. This is my favorite brush. What kind of brush is it? This is what I use on edges, guys. So you can use that to tease your hair. You can use that to tease your hair as well. Navasha, it looks absolutely gorgeous. We do have Thank to you. wrap up. All right. So we're going to let Danielle showcase and do what she's here to do, model and show us this gorgeous hairstyle. All right. Give me just a second. Did you guys learn a lot today? Yeah? Danielle, stand up for us and let's All see right. your look. All right, Danielle. You oh, careful. OK. All right, go ahead. Can stand up. Can we get can, Yep, yep, yep. Gorgeous. Go ahead, walk to the end. Do this full strut. Absolutely gorgeous. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please give Nevasha a round of applause. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for being here. Make sure that you enjoy the rest of your afternoon.